Nu kör den. Lite dött. Jim is a little bit tired and so am I. It's a work day. But we are very excited. We've done a box with the strikers. It's supposed to be 2 in there, but the box looks a bit small. <laughs> so uh, we'll just uh, have to open it and see. So these were not easy to find. These uh, are from the start, two gel blasters. They were made by Orange Warfare in China, uh, but the Chinese government shut down the factory. So they are out of business, but some of them managed to get out. Just the camera a little bit. Mm -hmm. Some of them managed to get out. Yeah, some of them managed to get out. Uh, and here's two of them. And this is from Octagon Airsoft. So they changed all the orange plastic parts into black ones. It is too. Mm -hmm. It's like being a kid on Christmas again. Some shells. These are airsoft shells. Yeah, the PPS, uh, if I remember it right. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> this is very cool. Oh, look at that. Ah! Oh, man. So, here's everything you will get in your box. It's the Striker 12 Airsoft Converted Gel Blaster with black parts instead of the orange ones. And you will also receive 12 Airsoft shells. These are the PPS ones. You can choose from PPS and apps. And when you choose uh, which type you want, you will also get a custom barrel made for Airsoft instead of Gel Blasters. And here we have the small little adapter that you put in here so that you can fill them with gas. So this is a shotgun with 12 shells, uh, semi-automatic. And what's cool about this is that when you load it, it won't throw the shells out. So you have to wear a stupid bag or go and pick them up. So they will be inside of this drum, but uh, reloading is a bit slow, just like on the real thing. <laughs> So here's how you load the shells that it comes with. You take this small little thing <laughs> and put it in here. And you take the gas. I'm not sure how long you're supposed to press this. I press about two to three seconds. And when all 12 are filled, you take some BBs and you put it in the top here. These appear to only have the capacity of three. I'm a little disappointed of that, but I hope there are other versions, uh, better shells uh, that can take more. I'm still pretty new with the gas shotguns, so I've yet to explore more, but I'm sure some of you watching are better at this, so please leave a comment with the shells that you think are the best ones and why. When you have loaded all 12 shells, you will have to wind the drum here we have that. That is max. And then you open this lid. Before you load it, you also want to put the safety on. And you put the safety on, uh, the drum will rotate when you press the trigger, but it won't fire. So that is very important when you load the gun. So you take the shell and press it and it will open up another slot. And that's the last one. Then you close the lid and crank up the spring once more. And that is max. Now it's ready to fire. All right, so let's shoot it. Uh, so I found uh, why mine jams. I have uh, one bad shell, as you can see, I put an X on it. 
when I load it, if I try to steer it back, it, it won't. It's a bad one. If I, if I take a good one, it will, it will cycle with no problem. But yeah, I think once again, uh, that's an issue with the cheaper shells. So if you use better ones or are lucky like Jim, <laughs> it will cycle better. But yeah, it's always nice to get free shells so you can test fire it, but uh, I will get better ones later on. So here's Jim, uh, is going to test his. It has been working better than mine. So let's see how it works. Are you ready, Jim? Yeah. Yeah, it shot a lot better than mine. Yep, worked perfectly. Yeah. So I'm very happy that mine works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to pull the trigger all the way back in a swift motion or the shell will just fizzle the rounds out. You won't get that back. No squeezing here, pull the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you reload this shotgun? Is it easy? No. You is know, it, is it, it just like on a real thing? Yeah, it is. You don't do it very <laughs> fast. So when you have shot all your rounds, you open the safety cover. First of all, you need to put the safety on. And you just pull the trigger. And if it don't come out, you use the uh, lever to get it out. Yeah, and then if it jams, you have a lever to get them out. Spring loaded. Press the trigger in, and they fall out. This is a very slow reload, but it's just yes. like on a real thing. Yeah, it is. Sounds like you would need a Mac 11 as a sidearm. Absolutely. <laughs> very fun. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy using this in CQB. How many joules or meters per second is it? The joule on both guns fired with 10 rounds is rather consistently up 0.7 joules with 0.2 BD. So sturdy. Yeah, this has actually been one of my uh, dream builds for a very long time. I haven't figured out how to build it on myself. It's a pretty advanced uh, mechanism. So I'm very, very happy to, to finally have one. I've been looking for one for a very long time. It's a super classic gun in old action movie. You can see it in Miami Vice, Total Recall, or in games like Max Payne and such. So. Yeah, I think this will be very neat to uh, clear rooms with. Okay, so a magnet test. Uh, all I could find was an old uh, Sistema motor, <laughs> but it will help us uh, determine which part are steel. So let's take the stock and start there. Let's start there. Yeah, it, it, it sticks. Steel. And the drum. It sticks. Steel. <laughs> let's in the back on the drum. Yeah, it sticks. So a lot of steel this far, and let's take a look at the barrel shroud. Yeah, steel as well. And by the looks of it, as it, this is steel, this is probably uh, parkerized. Uh, yeah, it looks parkerized. Yeah, if we take a close look on the receiver, I think the receiver itself is uh, aluminium, if I remember it right. So yeah, it won't stick on the aluminium, and that is probably anodized. So anodized is something you do to aluminium, and parkerized is something you do to steel, and they look pretty similar. It's a dark, a dark gray finish, which is very typical and classic look for the, these old guns. Overall, uh, from what I've read, these uh, airsoft ones or gel blaster ones are about four centimeters smaller. Uh, some have said it's only the barrel, but I, I still think maybe the overall gun is a bit small. Uh, I think the real one might be a little bit bigger, but I could be wrong. Uh, I haven't uh, compared it to a real uh, lower grip, but I do have the real front. So let's take a look on that. I think you have it yeah. by your legs. There we go. Here we have it. So yeah, um, the real shroud is slightly bigger. Uh, and this model, by the way, is based on the Street Sweeper and the Striker. The Striker is uh, South African designed, uh, but if I remember right, it had a 
small plastic uh, bit here, a brass deflector, uh, but the street sweeper uh, removed it. So the parts are uh, kind of a mix. And here's a real street sweeper uh, barrel shroud. The street sweeper did not have the front sight, so that will differ. But as you can see, it is slightly longer and it's probably about four centimeters. As I mentioned before, the dimension seems about right. So it's very hard to tell, but the grip uh, looks a bit smaller to my eyes. Yeah, it's slightly, slightly smaller. I'm gonna do a quick uh, test fit with the real barrel shroud. I think I would probably have to modify the barrel, but I'm still very curious how well it will fit. Here we can see the custom barrel that Octagon Airsoft made. I really appreciate the effort they made by doing this, as the original barrel for this was plastic, so it was uh, easy to break, I, I would believe, and, and too light and such. But let's just try and insert it in the real barrel shroud. So yeah, it's a good fit. I would presume, yeah, it's a different uh, locking mechanism. Here's the airsoft or gel blaster one and here's the real one. So we'll have to modify it slightly. But other than that, it's pretty similar. We have the shell ejecting rod. But the grip is a lot wider. <laughs> I think I could modify this to fit. Got the right finish and all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In a barrel is aluminium, right? Let's see. Yep. Yeah, it should be aluminium or some kind of uh, alloy. But it's a pretty good weight to it, so I, I really think this does a lot to the gun. Octagon Airsoft is also the only one uh, supplying these uh, custom barrels. That's pretty cool. So let's see the dimension. Here's the orange warfare one. 31 and a half millimeter wide. And the real one is about the same, actually. Also 31 and a half. So that's pretty good news. So I think the dimension should be as the real one on this. We have some smaller details, but that is very common on air shotguns in general, and that's why I have to modify them to fit with real parts. So I think this is a great start. And as you can see, all the plastic parts are black, but on the inside of the drum, it is still uh, orange. Uh, I think I can live with that, or I'm gonna try and paint it, paint it with a magic marker. I'm not going to spray paint it, as it's a mechanical part, uh, and that will only make the breeze and such when the paint uh, ships off, so I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, the real one is made of aluminium, and is a metallic looking part, I really hope there will be an aftermarket part of that in the future. I would love to have one in aluminium. Maybe not CNC machine, that is super expensive, but maybe a cast one would be cool, or maybe even a 3D printed one. So let's hope for that in the future. It is extremely sturdy. Feels yeah. great. Nothing shakes, nothing rattles. Yeah, very, very well built. Very impressed with the build quality on this one. Yeah, I'm kind of sad the factory shut down because if these would have kept doing uh, these two probably be pretty cool guns from there. Yep. But as I said, these are very hard to get. I've been chasing them for over six months, I think. But Octagon Airsoft will keep getting these. So if you are interested in one, check out their page. I will have it linked in the description. So, final verdict. It's a must if you are into retro guns. The polarized steel is something I highly appreciate as it's a rare thing on Airsoft and something the real one has. You can really tell that this was designed with passion by a fellow retro realism enthusiast. Don't let the defect shell fool you that I got. Other than that it shot well and some cleaning and lubing might not hurt as mine had some Chinese warehouse grease I had to clean out. Jim's did not. This might not be something you buy to dominate the field with as it has a slow reload and a short reach but rather a fun chunk of sidearm or breech gun for CQB games with a high amount of retro aesthetics. So if you're a collector of odd things and retro stuff, I'd say it's a must in the collection, so get it while you can.